Charterman, Charterman, Brian. Charterman, 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 Brian. Greeting comics, toys are hella sick. Hella whacking it. Take a bad hit, take a bad hit. Start a mess. Subscribe. Big nasty beak culo over here. What's up you guys, Charmus Prime here doing another DC figure review on the DC Comics Unlimited Wonder Woman or as I like to call it, the DC Universe Classics New 52 Wonder Woman figure. Pretty cool looking figure, guy gave a big thanks to Mark for selling me this figure via Facebook, thanks so much bro. He sold it to me for basic, or a little bit less than retail price, so I feel like I got a really good deal on this figure. I like the packaging, we got some really cool artwork from what looks like Jim Lee, I think that's Jim Lee over here. There's also the Superman Wonder Woman title which I'm very very interested in. I have not had time to read the comics that I actually already buy, but at some point I would like to read that one. Then we have the back of the packaging over here showing the same artworks as DC Comics Unlimited. Wonder Woman. Very, very cool picture. I like this a lot. I think that's Jim Lee. I'm not seeing a signature over here. Then we get this bio on Wonder Woman. If you want to read it, go ahead and pause it now. We get a picture of Injustice Batman over here, New 52 Superman, other figures from the wave. And then it says real name, Princess Diana of the Mascara, Ambassador of Peace slash Hero, Location New York City, the Mascara, Powers, Ability, Skills, Superhuman Strength, Speed, and Agility, Bracelets that deflect blows, Lasso of Truth, and they're forgetting the Invisible Plane, which is probably not part of the New 52, but anyway, Anyway, let's crack her open! You know that just doesn't sound right when talking about a female figure, it has multiple meanings there, but anyway, pretty cool looking figure. As far as articulation goes, a little disappointing, but I do like this New 52 design of Wonder Woman. I'll do a comparison with the original Wonder Woman design, or the classic version, I guess. But I do like how the figure looks. It's pretty nice. She has a little tail over here, which is kind of strange. Her lasso is not removable. She does have this sword accessory, which we should take a closer look at, and then take a closer look at the figure. So here is her sword, her one accessory, which is tilting just to one side more than the other, like in real life! Oh, and then the yeah, I like how it's sculpted over here. I think that's pretty cool. I like how we have this feathered look kind of sculpted over here, and then the handle's nicely sculpted as well, and it has some red paint applications. And she does hold it both in her left hand and her right hand. Then she has this little loop right here in the back, which is for storing the sword, which I think looks a little weird. I mean, it's very practical, but she's got a little tail. This isn't a very pliable material. It does feel pretty stiff, but it is a little bendy. And then you can just store the sword in here like so, which, <laughs> I don't know, that just looks weird to me. I guess from the front it doesn't look too bad, it's kind of hidden. I do like how the face is sculpted on this figure. I do have a little bit of a problem with the way it was painted. I feel like they should have put some flesh tone towards the top of her eyes because it looks like her eyes are peeled, man. Like she just saw the biggest Superman she's ever seen in her life. But the lipstick came out okay and the headband came out pretty nice. I like the paint applications as far as the flesh tone. The flesh tone is actually beautiful as hell. I really like this hair sculpt. I really like the blue and black mixed in there. I think that's great. The hair looks very, very nice. The four horsemen know what they're doing over here. That's just beautiful. They always sculpt the hair and the face is really nice on these women. I just think the eyes came out a little kind of weird. It looks like her right eye is a little bit closer to the nose than it should be, but otherwise very pretty Wonder Woman face. Her choker necklace over here looks great too. The stars sculpted on there. I really like the flesh tones. These flesh tones are great, man. Beautiful, beautiful flesh tones. You have this deco right here, just plastered right on there, the Wonder Woman thing. And then right over here above the breasts, nice little eagle thing with silver paint applications. Nice shading. We have some nice shading going down the middle right here on her belly button. Some stars sculpted in there. The arms look pretty good. The wristbands came out pretty nice. She has painted fingernails. I like that. I like this gold lasso, even though it's not removable, unless I'm mistaken, I feel a little scared to try to take this off, and nah, I'm not going to try to remove it, but I wish this was removable. Is it removable? No, I don't think so. Then here's her little bikini bottom thing, another wrist, and then yeah, we saw this already. The stars right here on her butt are sculpted, so that's pretty cool. She seems to have a little bit of a small butt for how thick her thighs are, but I like thick thighs, so I'm not really complaining about that. I mean, if you look at the proportions, you know, she does look pretty damn good, pretty attractive looking figure. You can see down the thighs there's some nice flesh tone shading over here as well and I do like the boot sculpts over here. She does have peg holes at the bottom of her feet. I'm not really happy with the articulation on this figure, especially just because it's hard to move her head left and right. Her hair really does get in the way. It's a very stiff material over here. It's not very pliable so as soon as you start turning it left she looks down. If you turn it right a little bit, or maybe I got that wrong right and left, but anyway she can only look that much. She can't look up 
at all. She looks down barely anything. No movement up and down on this figure at all. You can kind of shift it around just a little bit, but not much. She has shoulders that move outward. They move forward. She has a bicep swivel, single jointed elbow. She has wrist articulation. She has a diaphragm joint that can move side to side. It doesn't crunch forward and back at all whatsoever. She has hips that move outward. They kick forward, so she can kick forward actually pretty damn far. That's pretty sweet. She has an above the knee swivel over here, single jointed knee, and her feet move down and up and no ankle pivot at all but damn she can kick really really high so this Wonder Woman stands over six inches tall and here's new 52 Wonder Woman compared to our DC UC poison Ivy and DC UC star sapphire which I think these work in great scale with each other Wonder Woman should be the tallest one out of these three and here she is compared to the DC direct Wonder Woman figure based off of Terry Dodson's artwork as you can see this is a classic Wonder Woman look some subtle differences here they mostly replace the gold with silver with the new 52 version the boots are similar except you know, blue, red, obviously. And here she is next to a DC UC Superman figure, thanks John 3.0. This is a standard male figure mold, and he does stand a little bit taller than Wonder Woman. I think their height difference is pretty cool. Overall, I have to say I like this figure. I like the way it looks. I don't like the articulation too much. I'm gonna mess around with it some more. To be honest, I haven't tried posing it around too much, but so far the articulation is pretty frustrating. Mattel's articulation in their figures is definitely far inferior compared to Hasbro or Toy Biz, for sure. So yeah, anyway, that's my review, guys. I hope you dig it. Thanks again, Mark, for the great deal. Really appreciate it. I've been eyeballing this figure for a long time. I hope you guys liked the review. Hit the like button if you did. Please leave a comment, and don't forget to subscribe. I will catch you guys later. Peace.